So have you got one of these? An old laptop. An old one of these. An old desktop. Look at this. They were once primary computers for doing computer things, whatever you do at home. Well now, I want to use these. I want to repurpose them for actually building a server. A server. Yes, you can actually run a server directly at home on an old desktop, on an old laptop. I am a tech YouTuber, blogger, all of that. I release videos every week, so why don't you click on the subscription button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So how do you actually know if you're any good at technology? What if you think you're good, but maybe you're not as good as you thought you were? There is a great service that lets you assess your skill set, your skill level across the technology that you're in, whatever that may be. You could be in systems, you may be in networking, security, development. This tool essentially will ask you a number of different sorts of questions. The results will then show you your skill set and your ideal jobs. Maybe you're a service desk analyst and you complete all of these questions. At the end, you may actually find out that you have the skills to become a systems administrator. Maybe you're thinking of a bit of a career change and you enjoy cybersecurity. You may have some skills, but you don't do it as part of your job. At the end of this, you may actually get a list of jobs that are relevant around security, and that would be great for you. It'll also recommend certificates, certifications, IT certs that you should be getting to be able to upskill on some of those skills based on the questions that you've answered. It's completely for free, completely for free. And who doesn't love things that are free? The program is called Astrid. Go and check it out. Link down below description of this video. Let's give you a little bit of a definition first about what a server is, because there's a little bit of a misconception sometimes or a misunderstanding about what the purpose of a server is and what a server actually is. There are two things here. You've got server software and you've got a physical server, so the hardware. What is a server? Well, the server is something that is servicing something. So you've got a computer that is built with some stuff on it, and maybe it's a computer that has got a whole bunch of files on it. Maybe this is where you keep all of your uh, all of your videos. All of your video content is on this one computer. And then you've got other computers in your home or your, your smartphone or something like that. And you can actually access the videos that are on this computer over the network. And this computer is sort of like your designated video computer. Well, in a way, that computer is acting like a server. If you've got another computer, you can, you know, you can do this just running Windows. You've got Windows 11 running on there. You install some technologies called, you know, for example, Apache. You can install PHP. You can install MySQL. Build a website. You can install WordPress. Now, WordPress is one of these um, website creator tools. And then you convert that computer into a web server. Now the computer could be anything. The computer can just be your standard laptop, your standard desktop, but because it's running server software, it is now acting as a server. Then you've got the server operating system. Now the operating system, of course, is the underlying technology that makes the whole thing run. Everything that runs on the computer is being managed by this operating system. Now, of course, you're probably very well aware of Windows 10, Windows 11, You've got the Mac. If you're looking at Windows, for example, there's actually Windows Server software as well. We can remove Windows 11 completely from your computer and install the Windows Server operating system onto there. Effectively, it converts that entire computer into a server because it's running the server software. So now a standard laptop could run Windows Server directly onto it. So here we got an example of Windows Server. Windows Server has been loaded onto a USB stick. That USB stick has been made bootable. And one of the great things about Windows Server is that it comes with a whole suite of features and tools that you can actually load onto that computer. You can set up things such as a domain controller, Active Directory, DNS. You can set it up as a DHCP server. So you can download any copy of Windows Server directly off the Microsoft website, completely for free to use for 180 days. That is essentially converting a physical computer into a server. And this is a, what is this? This is a ThinkPad. It's a Lenovo X201. They're pretty old. This is an old computer. It's got a sticker here of Windows 7. So it's a, it's a fairly, fairly old computer that's running some server software onto it. This is actually running 
something completely different. It's running this thing called VMware. Now essentially converts the computer into what's called a hypervisor. So you remove Windows altogether and VMware, which is this company that essentially specializes in making virtualization technology, where you can build virtual machines. So you've got one physical computer, but you can run multiple virtual machines within it. Inside of it is maybe three Windows 11 computers running virtually. And that's completely for free, by the way. You can download VMware's ESXi, install it directly onto your laptop, and then go and build all the necessary VMs that you want virtual machines directly onto that computer. Now, by the way, all the stuff that we're talking about right here, I've done videos on a lot of this already previously. So do go and check in the description where I've got links to how to do ESXi, how to actually go and install Windows Server, how to set up Plex, all of that. I've got links to all of that down the bottom. The first question you need to ask yourself, what do you want this device to be doing? What is its function? What is its purpose? So what sort of a server do you actually want to build? So you've got to really think about what sort of technology do you want to be running? So you could be running Windows Server, you could be running VMware's ESXi. Something else that you could do is you could run Windows Server and then install VMware Workstation. And now you're building the VMs within VMware Workstation within Windows Server. But then you've got server hardware. These are now fully fledged, big servers, rack servers, blade servers, tower servers, and these are actually hardware build servers. They're still gonna be running server software onto them, but the hardware is so much more powerful, much better CPUs, more than one CPU, two CPUs, a lot of RAM, but of course we're talking about a old laptop. You can pick up any laptop and install server software onto it. So all you have to do is you literally open up your browser, you go and navigate to Google machine and type in download Windows Server. You then have an ISO of that operating system. You need to get that ISO onto a bootable USB stick. You stick it into the side of your computer and then you actually convert that USB stick into a ISO. And then you can start the installation directly onto your computer, follow the prompts, and then you can start building all the other stuff that you want to do. That's the first option. The second option, which is one that I love to do, is to go and actually build a VMware ESXi instance. Very similar to this, you just go into your Google machine, you type in download free ESXi, you go to that VMware website, and then same thing is you have the ISO that you download, you stick it onto a USB stick, boot up from that USB stick, and then you follow the prompts and you install ESXi, and then you can start building VMs in there. Here's another laptop that we've got that is running Linux Ubuntu. Deployed it with an ISO of Linux Ubuntu or Linux CentOS or any other flavor of Linux that you want downloading them completely for free. What else could you build? Well, you could also build a NAS. Now I've got some physical NASs that you can see right here. These are NASs, this is a Synology NAS for example, that has got a whole bunch of storage, but you can actually deploy an old computer as a NAS. You can download something called free NAS for free off the internet, go and find it, and then you just convert that computer, remove the old operating system, and install FreeNAS onto it. You then stick all of your data onto there, all of your videos, your photos, your documents, your onto this one computer, and then it becomes a network location for all of your files, essentially converting that computer into like a network file server that any device on your network can access. Absolutely brilliant. The other thing that I'd also recommend maybe trying is deploying your server as a firewall or a proxy. Essentially, things on your network need to have some sort of security in place. And more and more, every single day, you're hearing about these security you know, risks and vulnerabilities and hackers trying to get into computers. Well, wouldn't it be great if you on your old computer now as a server, you can control all of the security via a firewall. All the computers, all of your smart devices, your iPhones, your iPads, any other device on your network, you can feed it through, actually make it point through your new server, your new firewall server, and then all of the traffic is interrogated and analyzed, and it'll only allow the traffic in and out. Something that I love to use is an application called PFSense. You can download that completely for free and actually get it running inside your computer. I generally like to have something like a Linux environment 
running PFSense and it works absolutely brilliantly. Let us know what you're thinking about building and hey, because this is YouTube, you need to do the clicking on the subscription button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And also, why don't you check out some of my other videos, also some of my training courses if you wanna know more about technology. They're all down below in the show notes in the description as well. We'll talk to you next time as we continue talking about all things tech.